Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first video of 2017. Uh, I'm going to be doing my official review of the Assassin's Creed movie. I watched it yesterday because obviously as you all know it came out in the UK yesterday on New Year's Day. I'm just going to be doing my review of it. It's, it's going to be it's going to be no spoilers at all. No spoilers in this review because people get pissed at spoilers obviously because people don't want the movie spoiled for them. So it's going to be completely spoiler free. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. All right. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. We're gonna do a review of the movie. This is my personal opinion. If you don't agree with my views, then that's perfectly fine. I'm not making this video to just slander the movie in any way because there's actually some parts of the movie and a lot of parts of the movie that I genuinely liked. I, I actually enjoyed the movie as, as a whole. I'm gonna go over the good things that the movie did and also the bad things that the movie did. I'm gonna go over the good things first. Secondly, the bad things. Then I'm just going to give an overall view at the end of what I think of the movie overall. Um, it was good. It was good. I'm just going to say that out, out right now. It was good. It wasn't perfect. It had an interesting story. Kept me entertained. Um, some parts could have been a little bit better, like the pacing uh, was was off in some points. And, um, you know, the movie was executed relatively well. And it was, it was a good piece of cinematography. Um... So yeah, but we, let's just get let's just get straight into the to the good parts about the movie. So one excellent part about the movie was the action sequences. Now, they were really good. They were really entertaining, and they were done very well. It felt like Assassin's Creed. There were many points in the ancestors' memories when Callum Lynch was reliving the memories of Aguilar. The, there were just some great action sequences of like them running away from guards or you know trying to capture someone or you know recover something and it was just they, they were it was all very good like action sequences no talking very good music used that accompanied the scene and the sequence very well and it was it was overall just they, they were very action packed you know there was a lot of very assassins creedy things in there like the use of hidden blades such as when Aguilar did an air assassination that was very obviously a very Assassin's Creed -y thing to happen, and just generally using hidden blades in their combat as well. It was just, it was very cool to see because obviously the hidden blade is such an iconic part of Assassin's Creed, and it was just cool to see that in a movie and people using it in combat and stuff like you can do in the game. Another thing was the Assassins and Templars battle was actually explained very well. Um, I'm not really going to say too much about it, but. They, they made it very clear to outsiders to the Assassin's Creed franchise that the Assassins and the Templars had been fighting for centuries over the pieces of Eden and, you know, control and, you know, different ideas of peace and stuff like that. And people that are outsiders to Assassin's Creed that might be new to it and just watching the movie were able to see that very well. I can I, they, they did a good job of explaining how everything is um, very well and you know the situation with the assassins and Templars another thing that I was surprised about was the animus now obviously we'd seen the animus in the trailers and stuff and I thought it looked like absolute shit like I fucking hated it and in the movie I didn't actually mind it as much because it explained more about how it worked and it made sense and they justified it more like I absolutely hated the look of the new animus the idea of the new animus everything about it in the trailers and before the movie came out, but after watching it, I'm slightly more, you know, lenient towards it. I prefer the traditional animus where it's just sitting on like a bed or on a chair and it's kind of just like you, you do the memories that way. But I understand why they used this animus in the movie. It's because there's, there's like a consumer standpoint of it and then there's also a story standpoint of it. So the story is because it's more invasive. Well, obviously the bleeding effect takes place a lot quicker in the new animus, which I guess is so Callum Lynch can get his skills and then actually be like a kind of guy that can fight and stuff at the end of the movie. Some people can actually have ac action sequences in the modern day and stuff. But it's also to show that um, he's actually reliving his ancestors' memories and stuff and he's doing it in the Animus because people would be a bit confused about what the Animus was kind of doing when he's like outside and, and like he's just showing Aguilar's um, memories. They want to know what Callum's doing and want to know what the crane is. So. I see why they, why, they, why they used the crane, because it's it shows that 
he's reliving the ancestors' memories and he's doing what they're doing, but he's reliving it through Aguilar and stuff. So it kind of makes it make more sense to the people that are watching it and that don't understand like stuff like the Animus and maybe a bit confused. It kind of just helps them understand things a bit better. Another thing they did well was the cinematography and camera angling. Uh, and just, just how they filmed it in general, like there were scenes where there was an eagle flying over um, Spain, you know, in the Aguilar memories, it's in the trailer as well, and it does look really good actually, it looks great, like it shows like all these soldiers fighting each other, and then it zooms in on this um, this tower, and it shows Aguilar standing up there, and then he just leap of faith off, and it was all just very, it was done very well. There's also a scene, which is also in the trailer as well, where it shows Callum Lynch standing on like a ledge, and it zooms out from the Abstergo Industries, like um, massive building that they're in, and uh, it's it's it looks awesome. It looks like an Abstergo building. It's got the Abstergo logo on it, and it does look really cool. They, they did they did very well. Um, with the cinematography and, and the shots and the camera angling and everything and this is also present in the action sequences as well that was also filmed very well and uh, added tension how it was filmed with like close-up shots and you know just like kind of when the camera like bobbles I, I don't know what that's called but it's like um when, when an action sequence is happening or when someone's running like the camera will also like bob like it's running as well and that I don't know how to explain it properly, but they did that, and that was also very good as well. And that added like the effect that um, there was like urgency and and it was very tense and stuff like that. Another thing that I want to talk about is the soundtrack. It's uh, not, not much I can talk about about the soundtrack, but um, it was it was just good. It accompanied the different scenes very well, and. Uh, it just felt very Assassin's creed -y, whereas the, the music in, the, in some of the trailers wasn't Assassin's creed -y at all. The music in the actual movie did accompany it very well. They also respected a lot of um, features of Assassin's Creed lore. Not everything was perfect. N like, there was some part, there was some discrepancies that I noticed, but they did respect Assassin's Creed lore. Like, the Apple of Eden... Uh, was obviously it, it was how it was they explained that there were multiple apples they explained the assassins quite well and how they were like safeguarders of uh, free will and peace and stuff like that and it also explained the templar's goal of enslaving people with the apple and uh, there was also a painting this is also in the trailer as well there's a painting of fra savonarola from assassin's creed 2 holding the apple in front of a massive crowd of people and the original painting doesn't have the apple in it, obviously, but they obviously modified the painting uh, digitally. Or I have no idea what they did. Like they might have done it digitally. It probably was digitally. They didn't. They didn't paint an apple onto his hand. Yeah, it shows him holding the apple of Eden, and that obviously points to the bonfire of the vanities in Assassin's Creed 2, in which Ezio assassinates Fra Savonarola in front of all the people when he's holding the apple, and he, you know, retrieves the apple off of him, and that's really cool because. It just shows how it's all li it all links up, and it's 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 it is really cool actually. I, I I did notice that in the trailer, and it was in the movie as well. And it was a really fucking cool piece of you know artwork there to show the lore of Assassin's Creed. There are a few descendants of other assassins from the games actually in the movies as well. Uh, there was a there was a descendant of Baptiste from Liberation. There was a descendant of Arno from uh, Assassin's Creed Unity and it was just really cool because it, it made it feel like yeah this this stuff actually happened and you know the movie is kind of in keeping with all that as well and it was it was a very very cool thing to see the fact that it's like it's it's kind of carrying on Assassin's Creed and you know the movie is actually important to the story of the games and the progression of the story of Assassin's Creed overall. Another thing they did well was the modern day Templars and Abstergo. They felt like how Abstergo felt in the games. Just kind of like this big corporation that obviously uses the Animus and is very intimidating and run by Templars. And it was just done very well. Um, a good character in it was Sophia Rickin. She pronounces her name Rikin, but it is Rickin. I'm going to go with the fact that it's Rickin because I'm pretty sure they mention Alan Rickin's name. Um, he's in Assassin's Creed 1. And I'm pretty sure they pronounce his name Alan Rickin, uh, so I have no idea where they pronounce the name Rikin in the movie. It's it's very weird. But Sophia Rickin was a really good character 
I, I enjoyed her. She was like, she wasn't 100% Templar. She wasn't just a massive prick. Like, she actually wanted to help Callum and, you know, ease him into the process of the Animus and reliving his memories. And she was, you know, being very helpful. And she was quite an intelligent character. And uh, I enjoyed the scenes that she was in. She was, she was a good character. And Alan Rickon was also done very well as well. I don't, we don't know that much about Alan Rickon. I know he's, he's in Heresy. Haven't read Heresy. Probably should. But um, they also did him very well. He felt like, you know, just, just an Abstergo lad, really, that, that kind of just goes around and he's, like, trying to get the, the memories out of Callum Lynch because there's actually a scene where Sophia's talking about how she wants to ease Callum into the process and um, Alan Rickin says, push him, and she goes, that's not how the Animus works. So it's kind of like how Vidic wanted to push his test subjects, but it's kind of like, it's Alan Rickin, it's not Warren Vidic, it's... Alan Rickin, and they just kind of want to push the people that are in the Animus, which um, obviously isn't the way to do it because this Animus is much more invasive, and when you desync, it's a lot more. It, it's like you go paralyzed and you have seizures, and it's, it's all very violent when you desync from the Animus in the movie. But um, yeah, the Monday Templars were doing very well, and uh, they felt like how they should. And lastly, uh, I quite like Callum Lynch as a character, he does have some progression. He's a pretty good character, he's just a decent main protagonist. Although his progression, like, it's kind of like he's one character through the whole thing, and then suddenly at the end he changes, and it's it was all done very quickly. I feel like they should have given it a bit more time for him to develop, but obviously the movie was only like two hours long, so they had to have him change at some point. But, uh, you know, he was, he was just decent. He was a decent main character. Like, he wasn't awful and he wasn't overly amazing. He was just good. He was good. And the only thing that I change about him is how he progressed and how he suddenly just changed drastically. If you watch the movie, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about uh, in terms of his character changing a lot. But um, he was just, yeah, pretty decent overall character. Um, the movie was just pretty good. It was just a pretty good rendition of Assassin's Creed in movie form. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, and that's all the good things I have to say about it. And now I'm going to go on to the slightly, uh, slightly bad things and the discrepancies and the mistakes that I noticed uh, during the movie. So now I'm going to talk about all the things that the movie did badly or could have done better. And just a few mistakes that they made in the movie. Because obviously it's bound to happen with the complicated story that Assassin's Creed is. And how long it's been going on. There's got to be some mistakes they must have made. And, um... So, well, this isn't to do with the story mainly, but uh, the pacing was kind of all over the place during the movie. Like at the beginning, it was kind of fine, and it was like it, it was it was a bit a tad fast at the beginning, kind of actually. Um, but as it went on, it kind of got better, and then towards the end, like directly at the end of the movie, like n near in the end, um, it all got very fast, and lots of things happened very very quickly so um the pacing could have been done uh, a bit better but it's not too much of an issue another thing that i didn't like was none of the characters had an awful lot of development like obviously callum lynch had a lot of development at the end it was all done very quickly but like the characters that callum lynch meets inside the abstergo building they didn't develop an awful lot and i didn't really care about them they just felt like they were there as just random characters just for the sake of it like it wasn't it wasn't that great they, they were they were just i just didn't feel anything for any of the characters in it. It, it it was they could have had a bit more progression they could have been involved with callum a bit more and you know you it would have been better if you would have seen different sides to them instead of just these characters that are there kind of almost for no reason another thing is that aguilar was boring obviously he's not meant to be that much of an interesting character as he just served for action purposes but he, he just wasn't that wasn't that entertaining really like obviously he's good as an assassin and he he did all the fighting and stuff and that was all great but he wasn't an interesting character at all now I do like it when the Ancestor and the Monday person have good synergy, and they're both good characters, and, um, you know, Aguilar was just boring, and this is further increased by the fact that the Ancestor parts were completely in Spanish. I think that was a bad idea. I feel like they should have translated it. That could have made Aguilar a better character. It could have made him more interesting. They could have made him, you know, just, just more relatable, because it completely disconnects 
the audience from Aguilar completely because he speaks in a different language and he's not the most interesting character ever. So they could have they could have made Aguilar better, but I feel like in the next movie Aguilar's not gonna be this is there's gonna be no use for him. It's gonna be a different assassin. And they could improve and um, make it so the assassin's actually more interesting in the next one. So another thing that I've talked about already is um, Callum Lynch's character progression. It kind of starts off very slow. He's kind of just this this violent guy that's a bit pissed off and doesn't quite know what's going on. And then basically he goes to some guy that kind of cares about everything too much at the end. Like he goes from caring too little to caring too much about like the assassins and templars and stuff. It's it's very odd. It could have been done better. Like it could have they could have had it so there's this slow transition between caring about nothing, caring about himself, to caring about the fight between the assassins and templars and doing what's right and stuff. And, um, yeah, he just changes very drastically at the end. It's just, like, snap, and he just changes completely. It's fucking weird. Something that also kind of made me a bit mad is that the Templars seem as if they have never seen anything like the Apple before, whereas we know that the Templars have been studying the Apple, trying to get their hands on an Apple for so long. They relived the memories of Altair through Desmond, so they found the apple in Masiaf, but it, obviously it wasn't working, it was, it, was a, it was a broken, useless piece of metal, but um, they're just acting as if they've, they, don't, they, don't know, they know nothing about the apple, they know nothing about how it works, and it's really odd, because they've been studying the apple for, for hundreds of years, like they've been studying things about it, where, where they can be found, how they work, and stuff like that, and it's weird, because... In the movie, Sophia Rickin acts as if they've never come across one ever, or they've, they've never heard of them. And something that I also find weird is, she acts as if they don't know what the Isu is. And now the Isu is obviously the first civilization, we all know that. And everyone knows about the first civilization, like Dr. Grammatica was you know, in contact with Juno and stuff like that. And everyone, is, everyone knows about the first civilization that's kind of like involved with the main Assassin's Creed story. And Sophia Rickin just goes like, she goes, the apple may have been left behind by a, by aliens or God. And it's like, what the fuck are you on about? No, it's, uh, you, you know. Absurgo knows about the first civilization. You know how the apple works. And I just find it really weird that she's act she, she's acting like she's dumb or like the Templars in the movie know nothing about the apple, know nothing about the first civilization, the Isu. And it's it is it is very weird because the first civ is common knowledge, like to people that are involved with the Assassins and Templars fight. Especially in the modern day as well, like it, it's 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 common knowledge for someone fighting in that fight. Something else that I find weird is that there's no mention of Desmond and his accomplishments because obviously Desmond had the apple and he saved the world and everything and did all that and there's no mention at all of what Desmond did and I just find that really weird. It kind of makes it feel a bit disconnected, especially because they don't talk about the Isu or anything like that. They just talk about the apple. They act as if there's no other pieces of Eden as well, they're just talking about the apple, that's it, just the apple. Not the staff, not the sword, not the shroud, not the ankh, nothing, just the apple. So it's kind of weird that they mention nothing that happened in the games, nothing that could be in the games, and nothing that will be in the games, and it's, it's very, it makes it kind of feel disconnected. It does make it feel disconnected, especially because they don't mention Desmond at all. I would have expected some little off-hand comment about Desmond or something, but no, there's completely nothing about Desmond at all. But yeah, there's not really much else I can talk about in terms of what they did badly. Obviously, there were gonna be some mistakes. Assassin's Creed is a long-running, complicated mess of a story, and uh, I feel like they dealt with things very well, and the mistakes that were made were usually just because it's a movie, and it was made to appeal to kind of like a wider audience as well as the fans at the same time, so... There wasn't an awful lot they could do there, and it was just, it was a very good take on an Assassin's Creed movie, and I want another one. Like, I want the story to continue. I feel like they could do a lot better with the second one, and, um, yeah, I feel like they... The movie isn't as bad as everyone says it is. It's, it's, not, it's not as bad as the critics say it is, but it's not as good as some fans say it is. It's not, like, the best thing ever. It's not amazing. But um, it's not as bad as people say it is either, it's, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. 
So there's not really much else I can talk about regarding the Assassin's Creed movie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, be sure to like and subscribe for more Assassin's Creed content in the future. This was my no spoilers review of it, but I'm going to be kind of talking more about the movie more in depth with spoilers in future videos and stuff. But um, this is just my initial review of the movie. Um, I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10 because it wasn't amazing and it wasn't shit. Like it wasn't shit at all. I, I did enjoy it. But um, yeah, be sure to go like and subscribe for more Assassin's Creed content in the future and also stay updated on all my other videos and comment down in the comment section below what you thought of the Assassin's Creed movie if you've seen it and give me your opinions on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!